Now, I know you want to talk a little more about Giancarlo Stanton because in our pre-show meeting, one thing you addressed was people are blinded by that number, the first $300-plus million contract. Why are they blinded by 325? Yeah, I've done this long enough, Bob, that I remember when Ricky Henderson got $3 million, people were hitting themselves in the head with razor blades in the street. How can a player make this much money? This is the most anyone's going to make. And we've steadily gone up. It's a $9 billion industry. It's $25 million a year. I'm not going to make light that it's $25 million a year. But any way you add up, uh, I know not everyone believes in wins above replacement, but every team has a way of figuring out how much a win is worth. And they generally agree a win is worth about $6 million, maybe a little more a year. Well, he's about a six-win player. That's $36 million a year in his prime. You could say he's underpaid probably on the first three to five years of this. And so by stretching it out over 13 years, it's $25 million. Would you do Will Smith's next 13 movies for $25 million a movie? If it's $25 million a movie if you ran a studio? Probably yes. Knowing six of the movies probably aren't going to be very good. Yeah, you know, one thing you've written about, too, is when we look at that graphic, look at the age number under Stanton. That's right. the thing that stands out. Cabrera got his deal that takes him into his 40s. Not the case with Stanton. Right. All these big deals, all the top five players on these big deals are signed into their 40s. A-Rod, Joey Votto, Pujols, Cano, and, uh, and Miguel Cabrera. So this deal ends at, at his age 37 season. So, you know, you figure he can still be a viable player at age 37. Another 6'6 right fielder, Dave Winfield. Um, was a very viable player at age 37. You got other comps like that, you know, Frank Robinson. We're talking some of the best in the game, and that's the company Stan keeps right now. But let's remember, though, that if he's still a good player at the time the opt-out kicks in, he probably will use that opt-out as leverage to get an entirely new contract or an extension with whatever team has him right then. And I say it that way because we never know with the Marlins, right? I mean, the Marlins have a long history of aggressively doing one thing and then aggressively doing another, building up and tearing down. So if they change their mind, if it's not working, if the fans aren't coming or whatever, um, uh, Stanton will have the power with a no-trade clause to dictate where he goes and eventually with the opt-out clause to opt out. So he's not only got the money, he's got uh, the power and the control. So it's it's. Uh, great deal for him and and you know the, the marlins keep that option open because if he's still good they'll be able to send him somewhere yeah once you get past the point that it's the marlins who are giving him the 325 million i'm with tyler and joel that the 325 million shouldn't provide sticker shock this guy is a right-handed power hitter in a game where power just doesn't exist anymore so to pay him 25 million dollars a year i'm actually not shocked that the marlins are going to do that yes in the past you're right tyler they have had a different organizational philosophy. And look at their last five years. This $325 million is more than their payroll has been combined for the last five years. But it's actually a pretty smart move by them. He has the protection. They now have a player that they can build around. But, guys, they've got to get more than just Stanton. This isn't a LeBron James Miami Heat deal where he's going to touch the ball in every offensive play. Stanton's going to get his four at-bats. He's going to play the outfield and be a tremendous contributor. But you better put some other players around. Him. In Economics 101, I remember them saying, what's rare is valuable. And what's rare in baseball now is good offense and right-handed power. To piggyback on your point, he had 37 homers. The next most by a right-hand hitter in the National League was 29. He had eight more homers than any other right-hand hitter in the National League. What is rare is valuable. Let's also talk about what is becoming less rare is the excess TV money that's happened. And this was also speaks to your point about, well, how can they afford them? We know they get revenue sharing. They get a variety of ways that money comes in. They have more money because of the new national TV deal. Well, there's more money coming in in all variety of ways. But just remember, last year, MLB's national TV contract grew from $25 million per team to $50 million a team. That's an extra $25 million. They literally could take that $25 million per year and pay Giancarlo Stanton with new money without touching anything else they make. And so you see how the revenue streams continue to grow for the owners. So you have to expect for that sticker shock for the revenue streams to continue to grow for the players. And you look at the Marlins, and this is a team we see a lot of. If, if you're a Met fan, you watch the, the ENL East. I mean, they've got a really nice core, you know, with uh, Jose Fernandez coming back from the elbow surgery. Henderson Alvarez had a terrific year in the rotation, a little bit under the radar. Uh, the outfielders, in, 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 we, along with Stanton Yelich and Ozuna, are great. And they don't really need to worry about those guys' salaries for a while. Stanton had two more years before free agency, so they needed to get him locked up first. But uh, they are going to have to put some players around these guys because they, the only other guy they've got signed beyond next season is Jared Saltalamacchia. So, 
they need to do more than this, and that's always the question with the Marlins. Okay, you got your big guy, but what can you do to you know build around it and then sustain that going forward? Just a quick bow tie on Stanton. Should they have any concern about the fact that his season ended last year by getting hit in the face by a pitch? Yeah, you know, obviously they would have loved to see him play to know for sure. We've seen, as you mentioned the Mets, I don't think David Wright's been the same player since Matt Cain hit him in the head. And so, you know, this is a dangerous sport. We see you can't know for sure, and you're making a $325 million gamble. But Giancarlo Stanton wasn't going to sign this contract on April 2nd. He's going to sign it now, or he's not going to do it. And the Marlins are willing to take the risk that a 25-year-old is going to get over it and be the great player he's been so far.